Blue Lock Enjoyers. I was not familiar with your game. A lot of y'all showed up to my last Blue Lock video, which I appreciate a bunch. And in that video, I went over the first two episodes of season two, but unfortunately, I come with some very bad news. Episode three. This start to Blue Lock season two has been hilarious, but for all the wrong reasons. I was expecting them to jump out of the gate with this part of the story and maybe even exceed what the manga did, but boy was I wrong. If I'm not mistaken, this is the highest selling manga from 2023 and it's damn near a PowerPoint presentation at this point. But listen, these animators ain't bad at all. They absolutely cooked with season one and I won't let anyone tell me otherwise. But it seems like the time they are getting to work on this season is about the length of this video. And because of that, things are looking pretty bad to say the least. Windows Movie Maker Transitions, PNG Lock, Queen Bee Animation. I did ask her to guys say the manga got more motion than the anime. Yo, it's been a pain seeing how bad this new season looks, but what hurts even more is that an anime about horse girls racing looks like this. A friend of mine let me know about this and it just ruined my freaking day man. In what universe does a racing anime need this type of animation? This sh is so wild and I know a lot of people don't care about this part of the story and only hope for the U20 match to be looking good, which is fair, but me personally, I would have liked a wee bit more attention placed on the third selection. What's at stake at this current time is extremely important and is yet another make or break moment for our main character. But aside from a couple cool scenes and some decent frames, almost everything has been kinda ass and it's like they're just colouring the manga. That being said though, I was scared that we're gonna take yet another step down with episode 3 but it's pretty much the same quality as before with a little less PNG action going on. They trying to escape the PNG lock tagline everyone put on the series but still little to no movement took place in the episode. The one thing they added, or should I say cranked up, was the effects with this one. The studio must have got CapCut Pro or something, cause I swear every frame had these over the top VFX and speed lines going on. Yes, they're all not quite great, but the standards for Blue Lux Season 2 are in hell right now, so at this point I would take any improvements. And talking about improvements, there's this one defining moment in the episode which they handled somewhat nicely, which I'll get into later, that gave me hope for what's to come next. Bear in mind, the hope is damn near gone from here. I've almost accepted my fate with this season, but this gave me a glimmer of faith for the quality in the U20 game. Man, Blue Lock got me complaining like Benson anytime Mordecai Rigby did some stupid sh**, but let me stop yapping about the animation, cause my GOAT Isagi finally beat the washed allegations. Isagi Yoichi, Mr. Egoist, he was having a hall of shame performance last episode man. He was playing with the big boys here and wasn't doing anything to impose himself on the game. The two monsters Rin and Shido were just running rings around him and worst of all, at any given time this dude Karasu would pop out of nowhere, take the ball from Yusagi and violate him for a minute straight. This episode was just part 2 of Karasu cooking Isagi, and the amount of times he called bro Mr. Average was nuts. They called him a villain last episode but I think he's beyond that at this point. His team went up by 2 goals and his main focus wasn't even to score, it was just to violate Isagi as much as he can. And this is a level of hate that you just gotta respect at this point. Isagi at the start was trying basically anything to impose himself on the game and out of nowhere his teammate called Nanase decides to show himself and Isagi now had one more person to link up with. Bro, I can't be the only one who forgot this guy existed. He was nowhere to be seen for the last 6 goals scored and only now showed up. And aside from helping out Isagi, this dude was just here to glaze people, I swear. Every play Rin and Shido did cut back to this guy on his his knees in awe. He was on a different wavelength to everyone on the field besides one individual and that one person just so happens to be Isagi. Isagi was at his worst at this point cause how's this random dude coming out of nowhere and saying let me help you out cause you the only guy I can keep up with here. This dude couldn't catch a break to save his life and the cooking continued on with even Rin getting involved as well. I knew this guy Rin wouldn't miss out on an opportunity to talk shit on Isagi so whilst Karasu was on route to body him again, Rin jumps in and says, you still hunting that weakling? The body is dead bro, leave that shit alone. 
Is Saiki a better man than me? Because I would have had to just tap out at that point. He was failing basically everything and the match was almost over but my goat wasn't going to let things end like this. There's no way he did all that before just to go out like a scrub when it matters most. So after what felt like ages, Isagi finally started cooking again. His plans to combine with Rin and Oshido to create a chemical reaction didn't work out because obviously it didn't. Isagi really expected a 1-2 back from Shido who's camped in the box but of course that doesn't happen and bro just whips it across into the top bins. When you're Shido or Rin and you are that close to goal, of course you ain't passing the ball. But after this plan fails, Isagi somehow has a second awakening. He was like, this ain't the type of football I want to play. So once he tweaked his playstyle a little bit, he saw the game better. He could combine quick little one-twos to escape pressure with teammates relative to his level and was simply doing well. Felt like this day would never come, but Isagi was finally balling out, doing what he does best. And after two or three passing sequences, he found himself in the box free as hell with a perfect pinged pass from Hiyori which could allow Isagi to finally get his goal but of course this motherfucker missed the ball. Isagi my brother you had one freaking job but you fluffed it. Bro read the play combined with his teammates nicely just to ruin it at the decisive moment. I know his physical capabilities ain't on the level of a Rin or Shido he's like the smallest guy on the pitch but god damn that was frustrating. Despite messing that up I'm glad he was at least making stuff happen. He looked like his usual self for once and the biggest indicator that he was actually doing well was Karasu of all people propping him up. I didn't expect that at all but after seeing Isagi awaken the hater in him just left for a moment and he thought the team looked completely different with him playing well. But Isagi was still lacking. That final action still wasn't there for the boy and Hiyori being the ultimate teammate drops a gem of advice for Isagi to follow. Isagi was moving in three steps by seeing the play, thinking about it, then then moving but how about you skip all that and try thinking purely on reflex. Isagi the thinker himself heard this and was like hold on this guy might actually be cooking here and the way he implements this was goaded. At this point it seemed like a goal for Isagi was just inevitable. It was so clear he was gonna get the winning goal here and lo and behold the moment finally arrives. Hiyori on the wing with everyone charging to the box, Rin and motherfucking Shido who can score in all types of ways are hunting for that ball and Isagi really awakens the puzzle pieces and darts forward. You already know once them puzzle pieces come out a goal is happening one way or the other and Isagi really catches the two best players in blue lock off guard to slam the ball into the back of the net. His PNG was flying right here and Isagi hit that ball with so much ferocity I was low-key a bit worried for the blue lock keeper not gonna lie. All that frustration from not being able to impose himself on the game just bursted out right here Pause, and Isagi finally gets his goal. My goal for real and of course his goal had to come in the most special way possible. A goal to decide the game taken from Rin and Shido. God damn Isagi is really just that guy and this moment was so satisfying. He entered flow state in the closing moments of the game and done what he does best owning the best players on the field. He might have been playing mid for the majority of the game but at least my goal ain't washed. Not gonna lie I was scared for a second. I thought season 1 Isagi was gone forever but nah he's still here and better than ever. This guy Isagi really loves being the man of the moment scoring all these match winners and at this point everyone there complimented Isagi's effort. Karasu Loki did earlier, Nanase loves to glaze everyone so obviously he did and surprisingly even Shido and Ego did too. The only motherfucker who didn't was this salty ass dude Ren who couldn't accept Isagi took his shot. Their rivalry is still well and truly there and who knows maybe Isagi was still another one of his moments you never know. But that pretty much wraps it up. How did you lot feel about the animation in this episode? I obviously gave my thoughts on it earlier but I think there's still some teeny amount of hope for the U20 game. The animation in that might be alright all they gotta do is fix the lack of movement and get rid of that god forsaken green aura. Any colour but green please. But anyways thank you guys for watching hit that like button and subscribe for more and I'll catch you guys soon. Peace.